For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Glory to God. We got nothing to do for this morning but give God all the glory, all the honor, for he is worthy to be praised. Amen? Thank you. Amen. Do I have anybody in the house this morning that want to give God the glory, that wants to give God the praise? Anybody on Facebook this morning that came to lift up the name of Jesus? Oh God, we thank you this morning. But this is the Lord. on your feet with me if you would let's go to the Lord in prayer today bow your heads those of you watching on YouTube and Facebook live amen I'm already believing a miracle is going to occur I'm already believing deliverance is taking place I'm already believing the report of the Lord I know that the enemy is trying to come in your body and make you feel some type of way. But the God I serve is a healer. Can someone say it with me? He's a healer. Can someone say it? He's a way maker. Only if you believe it, I want you to lift your hands to the Lord and begin to worship him and bless him. I want you to begin to thank him and give him glory. Amen. If you would, begin to just clap your hands and bless the name of the Lord. Yes, Father, today, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your love. We thank you for the compassion that you have given to us. We thank you, God, for blocking the hand of the enemy that wants to make us miserable and wants to depress us and wants to embarrass us and wants to shame us and wants to make it look like you are a liar. But we decree today, even in this prayer, devil, you are the only liar. And we still have the victory. And we give you praise today, God. In the midst of a pandemic, we open up our mouths and we give the glory today. We Shabbat your wonderful name. And we decree today, deliverance will take place in the name of Jesus. This is my prayer today. Come on and clap your hands and bless them today. Amen. Glory be to God. You may be seated. You may be seated. Thank you, praise team. Thank you, Elder Donna, praise team. Thank you so much. Wonderful job. Thank you. Um, I want to discuss something with you today. Um, perhaps this would be a blessing to those of you who are listening. Um, it's raining outside, but it's also raining inside. I think y'all missed that one. I want you to holler at somebody and tell them it's raining on the inside, too. Well, what kind of rain are you talking about? It's raining miracles and blessings and everything I don't deserve because I'm on the inside of the house of the Lord. Some stuff is, is overshadowing my life and some stuff is going to overtake my life and I'm just going to bask in his presence. I want somebody to open so up their the mouth and say, of our warfare, it. Sister Gail, are not carnal. but mighty through God. 
to the pulling down. of strongholds. I want you to take a moment and exercise your faith and pull down every stronghold. Pull down the stronghold of your children. Pull down the stronghold of your boss. Pull down the stronghold of your family members. Pull it down! through the waters God said I will be with you and when you get to the rivers they will not overflow you I ain't finished when thou walkest I need y'all to get happy on this through the fire. Tell somebody, I'm going to walk through the fire. I will not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon us. He says, because I am the Lord, the Holy One. Of Israel, your Savior. This is why we worship. Because of all of the benefits that are due to us. Because He's our Savior. Hmm. Troubled on every side, but we're not distressed. We may even be perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, not forsaken. And Sister Sandy, I might even be cast down. And that's all right, because I'm not destroyed. Because he's our Savior. I got to preach. I got to preach. And this message that I'm going to talk about today might appear to be an Easter message. But it goes along with the culture that is going on in the day. So get your Bibles. Luke chapter 23. When you find that, indicate that by resting to your feet. Luke 23, I feel so good. I feel so good. The atmosphere is right. God is healing us. God is delivering us. And he's still making ways for us. Luke 23, verse 49, I'm going to read one verse, and I'm going to talk amongst this verse. And all his acquaintance and the women that followed him from Galilee stood afar off, beholding these things. I just need that one verse, and I'm going to talk from this topic. Uh, you're too close to me. I want you to, uh, you don't, don't look at nobody because they might get offended. 
But say it with me. You're too close to me. You may be seated. You may be seated. Ah. In, in, in today's time, um, because they wouldn't protect us, we are all have been instructed to protect ourselves. And, and the message that's been relayed because Sam, they could not and would not protect us. First thing we see in this culture is the blame game. Uh, I don't want you to hear me today in the spirit. We see the blame game and we blame another country for what has occurred in our country. When in reality, somebody should have had enough common sense to look after us. Even if you don't like us, at least protect us. Ooh, I'm talking good because ain't nobody saying amen. And, and because they wouldn't protect us, the message, Brandon says, basically, take care of yourself. <laughs> the first thing they do, you need to wear a mask. And, and, and if you're tested positive, you need to quarantine. And, and, and then make sure that everywhere you go, you know, you, you sanitize and you, and you wash when you go home and you do this and you do that. And, and the most uh, interesting one um, um, that, in my personal opinion, offends me is practice social distance. Because, because you know, my Bible, I don't know about yours, but, but my Bible says that, that wherever there are two or three, I ain't, I ain't got no help, big. Touching and agreeing, whatsoever we ask, shall be done unto us. And so, so, so I have a problem with, with all of this, pastors, because it, it, it appears to me that there's an attack on us, the church, the body of Christ. And I heard someone say, well, maybe God is allowing us to not go to church so that we can clean out the church. And I said, no, that's not it, because you still got some jacked up pastors. Oh, Lord. That allow any and everything in their pulpit. Oh, that ain't it. So, 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 so I, 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 I got to reading this, and, and, and God really started talking to me in the wee-wee hours. I know y'all say, but I know you know about wee-wee hours. In the, in, the, in the time of the morning when there's nobody up but you. And it's quiet. And ain't nothing on. And ain't nothing open. So God is talking to me. And I could not digress from this verse. And, and, and so we, we find ourselves in the culture now, Pastor Maggie, where all of these directives and instructives have been sent to us from our jobs, from our governors, saying we have to do this and we have to do that. And, and let's be clear, I don't blame them because they have to protect their state. They have to protect the counties in the best way that they can because somebody else wouldn't. Hmm. And, and, so, and, so, and so here we are, uh, months into a pandemic, and people are dying. And some people think it's a joke. And some people think it's a joke. And, 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 and although the sign, John says, wear your mask, before entering, you still, because your name is Karen, 
you still feel like these guidelines don't apply to you, yet it's you that's spread, spreading the virus. So caring doesn't matter to, to the guidelines and, and Karen doesn't care about you because, because in Karen's eyesight, Karen is right regardless. There can be no wrong with Karen. But let me walk up in there without a mask. Sir, sir, um, sir, you can't enter in. It's almost as if, uh, Sam, some guidelines and some restrictions are for certain people. This is the kind of culture that, that we live in. And, and I found this culture in this text. All right? Well, well Pastor, hurry up and get to it. Let me, let me, let me walk my way through this because, because this is a very, very important time in Scripture because it's the death of the physical man of Jesus. All right? And what you find in a few verses above, all right? So, so it's, the sixth, it's the sixth hour, and, and it was a dark time, and, and, and it was the, 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 the soldiers had, been, had planned to kill him, and they had already been beating him, but he wasn't dead yet. And they already had been whipping him, but he wasn't dead yet. Just like some of you. Some of you have spiritual soldiers that have been assigned from the adversary that's been whipping you, but you ain't dead yet. And have been beating you, but you ain't dead yet. Tap I can't tell you to tap your neighbor, but say to somebody, I'm still here. Uh, they, uh, the, 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 the soldiers from the enemy want you to quit and they want you to no longer carry the cross that God has assigned to your life and they beating you and they're scolding you and they're lying on you and they're tweeting about you and they're putting messages about you but say with me I'm still here and as a matter of fact, let's make it personal. The devil been trying you all this week. Can I get a witness? The devil been trying to speak in your spirit all this week. Telling you that you would be nothing. Telling you that you would never amount to nothing. Telling you that you're going to be broke all your life. Telling you that you're going to be just like your other family members. But the devil is a liar. And I want you to yell with me again and say, I'm still here. And let's be honest. Can I see the hands of you that can be honest? Some folks thought you would have died and quit a long time ago. But there was something on the inside of you that wouldn't let you quit. There was something on the inside of you that wouldn't let you throw in the tower. And because greater is he that is in he. And, and God gives us this, 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 this inner man that's bigger than us that won't let us quit. I know what MC Hammer said, but I, and I know he said it's too, some of y'all too young, but well, then again, y'all ain't that young. Uh, he said you was too legit to quit, but I got a new one. I've been through too much to quit. I want you to help me preach it and find somebody that feel like having church and say, guess what? I've been through too much to quit now. I've been backstabbed too much to throw in the tower. 
I've been lied on too much to quit now. Why? Because I'm still here by the grace of God. And so, and so, Jesus, you know, he's, he's on the cross. And I want you to remember this. Don't ever forget this. They have been beating him. All right. They have been, they have been whipping him. And, 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 and there's something interesting that happens. Uh, first of all, I want you to remember this now. There, are, there were some people um, that were with him, that were close to him. Number one was his mother. Right? I don't want you to ever forget this. There's something about a real mother that won't let her child go through a storm by themselves. Ooh. Let me say it slower for the people in the back. It's something about a real mother. You know, I can say that because not every mama is a mama. So there's something about the love of a real mother when her child is facing a storm when her child is going through some stuff she's going to always be right there by them can I hear the mouth of some mothers today that can say my child will never go through this by themselves my child will never suffer by themselves my child will never be this by themselves the love of a mother will always stick and stay if I could use this young woman today, uh, there is a lady, some of you may know her, um, her last name is Garner, okay? And, and this week, I saw some very interesting posts about her, not as a preacher, hear me, not as a, a, an evangelist, not as a church member, but I saw some posts from her as a mother. Can I preach this? She says, I need the saints to pray for my son and his wife. Can I say this? Are in Puerto Rico and a hurricane is heading their way. I just need the saints to pray. The love of a mother. Are y'all hearing me? Don't mind requesting prayer when she know her children are facing storms. All right? And so we prayed. Are y'all hearing me? We prayed and we prayed and we prayed. And the results were, I just want to praise God because my son and daughter-in-law have made it home. Why? Because the prayers of the saints, the prayers of the righteous, availeth much, and a mother will never let her child go through a storm by themselves. I must be talking really good. And so here is the mother of Jesus, right? All right, it's her, all right, and there's her sister named Salam. All right. Then there's another Mary there who's the mother of John and Joseph. All right. And then there's another Mary that's there who's from Magdala. They call her Mary Magdalene. All right. And all of them are there watching Jesus get whipped, get beat. All right. And there's nothing that they can do. But they're watching this horrific scene. I got to hurry up. I'm boring you. I'm watching this. They're, they're watching all of this going on. And Jesus suddenly requests for something to wet his mouth. Right. I want you to hear me now, Davida. So here he is. He's on the cross. All right. And they thought they beat the life out of him. But there's still life in him. All right. And he says to them, I need something to wet my mouth. I said, God, why, John, would Jesus request for them to give him something to drink. 
And God says to me, because, because Jesus needed his mouth to be prepared to make the last declaration so that everybody can hear it. Don't you ever let nobody tell you that you don't need your mouth. I know your mouth might be covered right now, but I want you to open up your mouth and release a praise. I want you to open up your mouth and release a declaration that can change your family's attitude. I want you to open up your mouth and decree it is so. Open up your mouth and say, God, right now, I need you to do it for me right now. I need you to touch my body right now. I need you to touch my finances. Open your mouth and decree it. All right. So, so he says, you know, uh, Luke says, Father, into my hands, I commend my spirit. The other synoptic gospel says, it is finished. All right. And so, so when he says it is finished, finish that really means that he's he has now power over death Ooh. and though his body may be going to a tomb his spirit is going to paradise i wish i had some help in here and so here he is now. This is very interesting. So the centurion, there was a centurion there who was there on assignment to watch the body of Jesus. All right? All right? And so when the centurion saw what had happened, watch this. The centurion, oh no, watch this now. The centurion saw the life of Jesus or the ghost being given up, something happened to the centurion. And what's so interesting is that the centurion had a little bit more action than some of y'all in here. The centurion started to glorify God. Why? Because he finally captivated in his mind that I know what they said, but I know what I saw. Oh, I saw the ghost of this man be glorified, and I can't help but give him praise. Well, certainly, this was a righteous man. And certainly, I want to say this to you, that that's why you should never, ever, 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 ever wait until everybody else start giving God glory. You should go for what you know. I ain't got no help in here. If you know God has brought you out, tell him thank you. If you know God has healed your body, tell him thank you. If you know God to be a way maker, open up your mouth and say glory be to God. If you know God can come into your house and make every wicked way straight, I want you to open up your mouth again and say, God, I just want to thank you. If you know God can suspend some stuff over your life that you was doing before you were saved, and you brought that same spirit into your saved life, and you told everybody you was delivered, but you were still struggling in that area, and God should have cut you off, but instead he gave you chance after chance after chance, and right now he still gives you another chance. You ought to open up your mouth and say, God, I just want to praise you. You've been so good to me. I just want to open up your mouth and give you praise. All right. So the centurion. I thought you said, Pastor, you were going to preach about you too close. All these judgmental people watching me. He, he not on task. The people, watch this, it's very interesting, that came together to that site. 
Oh, in other words, uh, uh, Sister Alice, the people who came to watch, you do know, I don't know if I should inform you of this or not, because some of y'all are going to get mad at me, but I just want to help you. You do know there are some people that just want to watch you. They, they, don't, they don't want nothing from you. They don't support you. They don't come hear you preach. Y'all ain't hearing me. They don't buy your music. They don't say happy birthday. They don't say happy new year. They don't say merry Christmas. They don't say nothing. All they're doing is watching. Uh, and, and, and the only time they talk about you is when you mess up. Well, this is a hard crowd to preach to today. I must be talking about somebody in the high house. The only time they ever talk about you is when you mess up, when you fail. But when you have succeeded in something, when you've graduated, when you got another job, when you got another hairdo, when you got another house, when you got another pair of shoes, and you want to celebrate yourself, the first thing they do with their big liver lips is look at you and hate on you and disregard you. Why? Because they secretly want to be you. Y'all ain't hearing me. You got to watch people who are only watching you. It's not that they're watching you. They're trying to figure out how you are you after all what you have done. They're trying to figure out how in the world is it that God still blessed Queenie when I know what she's done. I'm trying to figure out how in the world did God bless Elder Troy when I know what kind of life he used to live. I'm trying to figure it out. Well, look at this. Let them keep watching. Put them in HD and let them keep watching. Give them something to talk about. And let God be glorified in your life. What they're going to figure out that it was never Queenie. It was never Troy. But it was God. So they are watching. All right. And, and they are watching all of the things that have been done, Larry. All right. And here's what the Bible says. They smoke their breasts. All right? They smoked their breasts. And watch this. And returned. All right? When they smoked their breasts, they realized, Sam, that they made a mistake. All right? They, they realized. I'm pretty certain these were the same people uh, um, that were saying, uh, let Barabbas go. Oh, Lord. You know, we, we rather have Barabbas I want you to hear me in the spirit. This is the culture that we live in. The culture we live in, hear me, Rhonda, doesn't want Jesus. They want Barabbas. Oh, my God. And if you're wondering, how is it me and Deacon was just talking about this? And we were saying, I'm not going to call no names because I want y'all to still love me. And we was trying to figure out, what is it, Pastor Maggie, can people see in this person? What, what, what is it that, that people can see in this person? And so I really started thinking about it when Deacon left me, and I realized that people support what they like. All right, what you mean? Okay, so I'm going to make it very elementary to you since y'all want to act like y'all remedial. All right, so if I like bubblicious pink gum, Okay, all right, and you scared to say that you like it, okay, because that's what I like, that's what I talk about, I don't like lemon, I don't like blueberry, I like pink bubblicious gum, and because you can't say nothing to nobody about it, because they afraid you're going to vote, oh Lord. And so, and so, so watch this, so because I'm broadcasting Pink Bubblicious. Oh, Pink Bubblicious is good. You go and buy a sign. I like Pink Bubblicious. I just love Pink Bubblicious. I don't like Danny, but I like what he chews. And this is the kind of world that we live in, that people support 
what they secretly admire. It is sad that we are living in a world where people believe that racism is okay. It's sad that we live in a society where people think that black people don't belong. I'm talking about Christians. It's sad that we live in a world where they are telling us, uh, stand by. Y'all ain't hearing me. Which simply means if you're not careful, they will take you out of here. Y'all better catch me in the spirit. And, 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 and let me be clear. Uh, 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 people uh, will, if you are not mindful, if you are not careful what you do, you will be influenced to do what everybody else does. All right? All right, you'll be influenced. And this is the kind of culture that has been created that is odd and it's awkward when you stand by yourself. Let me tell you something. Even if you have to stand by yourself, if you are standing right, you are never alone. I want you to help me preach it and tell somebody, even if I got to stand by myself, as long as God is with me, I'm going to be all right. That's the wrong neighbor. They're too dry. Find another one. And say, hey, guess what? Even if I have to stand by myself, if God is with me, I'm going to be all right. Now give yourself a hand praise and tell the Lord thank you. Here we are. So these individuals, uh, Brother Ray, they saw this and they felt bad and they turned their back and went home, which means they returned. All right. Now I'm getting to my topic. All right. All right. They turned their back and returned. All right. And all his acquaintance. All right. Uh, in, in the NIV version, it says, but his acquaintance. In the New King James Version, it says, but his acquaintance. So that means that, that the con there's a contradiction from the last verse until now. In the last verse, people left Jesus in his dying moments. People left him and didn't want to have anything to do with him. Some of you have been down this road at your most lowest points of your life. Those who ate with you, those who you bless, those who you fed left you to die. All right? But his acquaintances and the women that followed him from Galilee, it's amazing that hear me, it did not say anything but anybody but women. Women, the women that followed him from Galilee, all right, stood afar off beholding these things. Well, preacher Danny, what are you saying? I am saying this to you. The, the people that followed him, watch this, had to put some distance between him and them so that they could see the hurt that was done to him. So I am simply saying today, some of you are too close to me because you can't discern when I'm going through a storm or if I'm just hurting. You're too close to me. And, and right now, I want you to evaluate your life because some of you are too close to people that you can't even reprimand them. You're too close to them that you can't tell them the truth. You're too close to them when you know, okay, well, how do you think my hair look? Do my hair look right? How does it look, girl? Ooh, girl, how does it look? And your answer is, okay. That's not what she asked you. She wants you to be truthful. And because you're so close to her, you won't tell the truth. I'd rather for you to tell me the truth 
so I won't be embarrassed. I'd rather for you to tell me the truth so I won't look like a fool. I'd rather for you to tell me the truth because if we like that, you don't mind sharing with me the thing that make me look bad. But the problem is you're too close. I want you to think about it. Most of the people that you can't be honest with, you know why? You're too close to them. Most of the people, they brought food over your house. It's funny, but it's right. And you, oh, I brought you some potato salad. And you licking, oh my God. Potato salad is supposed to at least be yellow. Why is my potato salad beige? And so you looking, and, you, oh, and you're just not going to be out. Oh, girl, it was wonderful. God bless you. No, why couldn't you? Why couldn't you be honest? And then you're the same one, hear me in the spirit, when somebody else tells them the truth about them. Now you want to get on her bandwagon or his bandwagon. They shouldn't have never told you that. Well, maybe if you are their friend, if you are their associate, if you are close enough to them, then you would say, nah, that's wrong. You shouldn't have done that. But the problem is is, you're too close and I want to say to you in here today don't get so close to me that you can't tell me the truth don't get so close to me that you can't tell whether I'm hungry or hurting don't get so close to me that it looks like from where you are sitting is that I'm desperate but in reality I'm in a prayer life for the fighting for my life and you this is where I agree now and God had to deal with me. There is nothing wrong with social distancing. No, I ain't hearing me. See, when I preach, I have to preach what makes sense to me. And God says to me, this is why. Don't, don't knock the social distance. You need the social distance so that you can see people for who they are. You need the social distance so that you can see how folks act when they're not in your presence. You need social distance but you can tell the person that was in your face and the person that's around the corner. You need social distance so you can have some space. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, don't be funny. I need some space. And let's be honest, say neighbor. I need this distance so that I can tell what God is doing in my life. I need this moment so that I can tell that what I'm going through, I'm going to come out victorious. I want to preach to some folks that can be honest. Some stuff you went through, you would have came out better if you was by yourself. But because you had Pookie and Shanene and all of them, you made a mess out your life. And I'm trying to get you to see today that you're too close to some folks. It's time to back up so you can hear what God is saying. It's time to back up so you can learn how to pray. It's time to back up so you can learn how to fast. It's time to back up so you can learn how to conserve yourself and preserve your energy. Come on, open up your mouth and tell the Lord, thank you. You're too close to me. Pastor, what you mean? You're too close to me. You're too close because... Because you think that it's all right to come to me and talk about my friends. No, you, you, you're a little too close. You, you, you're too close to me because I didn't ask for your drama. You shared your drama. And you topped it off, Rhonda, and said, now, if you tell anybody, I'm going to know it came from you. But what you didn't tell me is that you told five people prior than telling me. You're too, too, too close to me. That when you can influence me not to come to church, 
Oh my goodness. You, you, you're too close to me when, when you can get me to do stuff that I know God is not pleased with. Oh my God. Okay, they acting deep, Queenie. So now I'm, I'm going to break it down to you. Okay, I'm going to be real with you. All right? You're good and safe until you get around a certain people. When, when you get around them and the beast come out. Oh, my God. I didn't know you acted like that. Girl, that was the old me. No, nah, it shouldn't be no old you. Because you saved now. Uh, uh, why is it? Why is it that we aim to get so close to people when you really setting yourself up for the biggest down heart break in your life? And not everybody can recover from broken friendships. Hear me, hear me today. Some of you parents in here, you know what the problem is? You were too close to one child and the other ones were distant. Uh -oh. And so what happens is when the one that was too close bluffs you, now you don't know how to respond. Okay, let's get out. Let's, let me get out your house. Let's bring him to the church. Uh, see, the, the issue, deacon, pastors, is this. Everybody want to be close to the pastor. And for the life of me, I can't figure out why. Why do you want to be close to me? Well, Pastor, let's go hang out at Yum Yums. Why do you want to be close to me? Pastor, let's watch some movies. Why? I don't mind. We all don't mind being your friend, being your companion, being cool. But we just can't be hanging out. Oh, Lord. I know some of y'all think, oh, he shouldn't say that. I ain't calling him for nothing else. Man, that's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying is we, we pastors are your spiritual advisors. That's what we do. We, we are only to instruct you from things in the word. All right? And, and when you have a leader that likes to get into your personal business, that's not a leader. That's a tailbearer. You know what a tailbearer is? That's a gossiper. So I don't want to know your personal stuff. I just want to let you know that regardless of what you go through, God will bring you out. Are you hearing me today, saints? And sometimes the problem is you are too close. You got to bring some, bring some distance between you and him and you and her. The issue is you, 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 you try to fit in doesn't work. And you only bring about hurt and harm to yourself. And y'all can look at me today and roll your eyes and, and talk bad about me and mumble. It's all good. But the women that followed Jesus, they had to see it from a distance. All right? Maybe if they would have remained too close, they would have never saw it. So they had to separate and put some distance between Jesus and them so that they can see my Savior is hurting. My Savior has gave up the ghost. And the reason why many of you have missed it when people called you because they were crying out, they were hurting. They needed a word from the Lord because you too close to them. You got you to gotta separate the, the ministry in you from the friend in you and tell them the truth. Tell them when they're wrong. Tell them you got to repent. Tell them it ain't a right. God is not pleased with that lifestyle. You got to tell them. You know what's funny, Deacon? That as soon as the pastors don't be honest. Uh, uh, that preacher over there talking about be honest, but he ain't being honest. No. That's why there has to be some distance. 
I got rebuked because I felt like social distance was, that ain't, we shouldn't be doing that. I want to touch my neighbor. <laughs> I want to run over and shout with him and hold hands. God had to reveal to me himself, I'm even in this mandate. I'm even in this command that the governor has put in place. Stop thinking it's all about man. I am even in this command and obey those that have rule over you. I said, God, I got it. You're right. And God said to me, you will never get it when you're too close to some people. And I am saying to you in here today, there are some people in your life, Brandon, you're too close to them. There are some people in your life, Patricia, you have given them too much accessibility to you. There are some people, who, in, there are some of you, you have people in your life, you have given them too much of you. And to be honest with you, you want that in return. But they don't have it in them to give it to you. You, you can, you, if you don't hear nothing that I say today, I'm saying this from my heart today. We have to, one thing we talked about in the African American Men Leadership Academy yesterday, this is what we said, Brendan, to these young men. We said, you young men must learn to prioritize early in life. There's nothing unattractive to be a grown man and don't know how to prioritize. Oh, that's, that's rough. No, it's serious. Because we I've got to teach these young men and saints that when you prioritize, you put first things first. And some things you have invested into are optional. They are not your priority. And anytime you put more time into things that are optional, you are not prioritizing. Well, what does that mean about being close? I, I'm going to share it with you. This is what this means. That means that when you allow accessibility to people in your life that are optional, all right, they bring with them optional ideas, optional suggestions. You got to protect who's around you, particularly in a pandemic. You got to protect who is around you. Say it with me. I just need some space. And I'm not trying to be funny. Oh my God. I ain't trying to be bougie. I ain't trying to be, oh, he trying to be uppity. No, I ain't trying to be uppity, Sam. I ain't trying to be bougie. I ain't trying to be all that. But, but even Jesus himself separated himself from the disciples to get to a mountain to pray because he himself was showing us there's nothing wrong with having your own space, having some distance. I'm done. I want you to rest in your seat today. I do all right? All right. <clears throat> a certain person told me one day, this is what she told me, Rhonda. She said, you know what your problem is? You give everybody so many chances. People that lied on you, you go right over there and pay their bill. People that did you wrong and, and that has a pattern of doing wrong, you go right over there and do this. And for a minute, I started to feel bad. But then I had to realize, this is just who I am. I can't help it. I can't help but helping people. I can't help but to love you. I can't help. Yes, do you, do you know how it feels to be in the midst of people, Donald, who you know have said things about you? And you just there, and you act like ain't nothing wrong. How you doing? How's your mama? Ain't nothing wrong. But you know they have said mean and cruel things about you. I know God has done a change in my life. And I don't expect everybody to celebrate my change. I know what he's done in my life. And as long as I know 
as long as I know, Brenda, I'm going to keep on doing what I do, being firm in the faith, exercising godliness, practicing just trying to do what I thought Jesus would do. Yeah, but what would Jesus do? He would have done the exact same thing. All right? Let me close. I sure would like to have an altar call, but we can't. <laughs> we don't have no six feet signs up here. So I'm going to ask that you exercise your faith and stay where you are. Now, if you believe that God is a way maker, I want you to lift your hands to the Lord. Because I want to worship before I pray. If you believe that God is a healer, I want you to. I want all of us to be on one accord before I pray. If you believe he's a healer, if you ex experienced his healing power, I want you to slip them hands up. All right. All right. If you believe him to be, watch this, a promise keeper, I want you to lift them hands up in the air. If you know him to be a light in the darkness, I want you to slip them hands up and hold them up high. Waybaker, miracle worker, promise keeper. You said you know him as that person. Light in the darkness. Say it with me, God, that's who you are. Ah, come on. Waymaker. Miracle worker. I thought I had a church in here. Promise keeper. Light. Hey, I buy my shiny in the darkness. That's who you are. Come on. Waymaker. Miracle worker. Promise keeper. What else? Light in the darkness. What? That is who you are. Come on, Darrell, help me out. Come on, lift your voice and sing it. Come on, way. That's right, come on. I can't hear your voices. I know you got on masks, but lift your voice and sing. Waymaker. Waymaker. Miracle work. Oh. Promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Come on, lift your voice. Oh, oh Waymaker. Waymaker. Miracle work. Promise keep. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Way maker, way maker, miracle work, promise keep. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Lift your voice and sing. Waymaker, Waymaker, miracle work, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Come on, lift your voice. Come on. That is who you are. Say it with me. That is who you are. Say it. Come on. That is who you are. That is who you are. That is who you are. Yeah. 
That is who you are. That is who you are. Oh, that is who you are. 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 And because of that. Because of who he is, we worship him and we bless him. Father, we thank you today for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love. And we thank you for your everlasting peace. Everything you've given to us, everything you have protected us from and you have allowed us to endure, we just want to thank you. And if there's anything standing in our spirit that makes us unacceptable to you, Lord, we ask for forgiveness. We thank you, God, for giving us the opportunity to get it right. In Jesus' name, we pray today. Clap your hands and bless them, everybody. Thank you. Listen, it is offering.